Think of a retro adventure game. What comes to mind? Tomb Raider on the PS1? Mist on the PC or Mac? Or maybe you're thinking even earlier, like the first Legend of Zelda on the Famicom NES in the mid-80s. Well, a little bit earlier than that, and the very first computer adventure games were a text-only affair. Here in the UK, book publisher Osborne released a number of these text adventures for home 8-bit micros of the time. But these games didn't come on a disc, they didn't even come on a cassette tape. They actually came in book form, like this one, with the game and backstory and pictorial printed graphics in the front, and all the code written in the basic programming language in the back. So basically, if you wanted to play this game, you had to hand type every line of code manually into your computer. Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hello, I'm Tom and a warm welcome back to Wi-Fi Sheep here on YouTube. Before we go any further, we have a new name and web address for you to remember. Here at Wi-Fi Sheep, we're really excited to be partnering with PCBGoGo.com. In August 2020, PCBGoGo celebrated their fifth birthday. To celebrate this anniversary, they are giving out a series of discount coupons and souvenirs to all new and regular customers. Although PCB GoGo is only five years old, their factories have been providing PCB manufacturing and assembly for domestic customers in China for more than 10 years. The PCB fabrication and assembly services from prototype to mass production are fast, affordable and reliable. Join now at PCBGoGo.com and get up to an amazing $150 money off coupons and stylish souvenirs. So don't delay, these amazing anniversary offers are only valid until the 25th of September 2020. For full details and to register your free account today, visit www.pcbgogo.com. Details and links in the description. Okay, so I'm just going through the book briefly now, and we can see on the front cover here that it states that it runs on a number of computer systems. Uh, most of which we could probably do here actually, so it's a case of trying to decide which computer system would actually be the best. Uh, it does state here 48k Spectrum. Now I do have one of these. Here we go, this is a 48k uh, original Spectrum. Um, unfortunately this particular machine doesn't work properly and I'm sorry, even if it did, I'm not typing on a membrane keyboard. That would just drive me crazy. Uh, so I don't think we'll be doing anything with this today. So sorry ZX Spectrum fans, but it's a no for me. Logically, as most of the code in this book, the back does appear to be written in a quite a straight form of BBC Basic. It would make sense for me to use a BBC Micro as that is one of the systems I have numerous of here in the workshop. So it makes sense for us to use the BBC Master 128, this particular machine from 1986. This one sits here, set up, ready to go uh, in the studio most times. So you obviously see it in the back of a lot of the videos we do. So I think it just makes sense for me to start typing this listing out on the BBC Micro and uh, we'll see where we get to. Okay, uh, I'm about, where am I? Line 1110, so I'm about halfway through at the moment. Um, actually, no, probably about a quarter of the way through. I have to be honest with you, this sort of repetitive copying into a computer kind of reminds me a bit of primary school where the teacher used to get you to just repetitively copy something off the blackboard or out of a textbook and it didn't go in, you were just you know, just copying things mindlessly, and it feels a bit like that with this. Um, 
I think it would be worse if you were younger and you didn't actually understand what the basic code was actually doing. It's interesting to look at, but this is, I have to be honest, a little bit tedious, but let me just carry on and see if I can get through it. Oh, okay, it's been about two hours later and we got to line, where are we? 4,890 and the code hopefully is all in the computer. Um, yeah, that was uh, quite an undertaking. Now I need to save this probably straight away. Now I could use disks. I do have uh, floppy disk drives attached to this master, but I also have a more modern way of saving data, which is to use what's called an MMC device. You may have seen me talk about this on the channel before. Basically there's a little uh, SD card reader fitted underneath this computer in the user port. Uh, Boost Micros have a series of ports underneath. And I think it'd be quicker and easier just to save this program uh, to an SD card. So let's just do that right now. One thing I've added because we're on the BBC Micro and this game seems to lag is a intro splash screen. Uh, basically because the lines were going up in 10, so 10, 20, 30, there was 10 lines whereabouts available from line 1 to 10 that were free. So I was able to squeeze some extra lines of basic into that and if I just run the program now you see it switches screen mode and we actually have this splash screen which gives the original copyright, uh, the coloured silver mountain text and the youtube.com forward slash wifi sheet uh, brand on their or web address and then it asks you to press space, you press space and eventually when it wants to behave there you go it goes through to launch the game. So let's just go over the gameplay. So we press space and we are entered with this screen of what we want to do. Two options, to start a new game or continue a save game. So we'll press one, we'll continue. Uh, and then we're basically, it describes where we are and what we're doing. So good luck on your quest. You're at a crossroads and you can go east or west W. By let's say I want to go west. So I just type W, hit the return or enter key, or it's a bridge. Patrol stops you at the crossing you have at the end of the bridge uh, and you can go east or west. So at this point you'd actually refer to the graphics, uh, the drawings in the book for the drawing, if I can find it here, of the troll at the bridge. Let's go back. So we'll go back. Uh, let's go north, ancient circle, uh, east small stable you can go can we look you cannot look so you sort of have to start guessing what the commands are to um uh, west no we've been west south and we're now in a village so you actually move around quite quickly in this game um not many steps between different locations uh so we go north yeah, so you end up kind of just forgetting where you've been and you start going around in circles. So I think a, kind of like a, a visual representation of where you are and what you're doing would be quite nice for this. But yeah, I, I think you could you could spend an evening with this. But you really do need the book to help you and kind of visualise what's happening. So one other thing we could try is a completely different computer system that's not part of the Acorn ecosystem. We could try the Commodore 64, which this game is meant to be compatible with. Now, I don't have an actual real Commodore 64, but what I do have is the 2019 clone system of the C64, which was an attempt to make a modern look-alike system that's meant to be completely compatible with Commodore 64 disk images and ROMs. So I thought it was an interesting experiment, and because I'm not typing in that all again into the C64, can we actually extract the basic I've just put into the BBC Micro and get that converted to a language that the Commodore could actually understand. So I've taken the micro SD card from the MMC device in the BBC Master and I've transferred data off here onto my Mac. And what it created was this 
.ssd BBC micro disk image file called Silver Mount. And that's actually a virtual floppy disk containing the program that I created on the master. So to open that here, we need to open BBM emulator. And on the Mac, we can simply drag and drop on top the disk image. So if I now call star C dot or catalog, you can see there are the files on the system and I should be able to load silver M like so. And you can see it runs perfectly fine in the emulator. So we'll hit escape. So if we now want to extract the source code, if we type CLS to clear the screen and then type list. Now if I go command C and if we open a new text edit file, you could use a notepad or wordpad on uh, Windows. But here on Mac, it's uh, text edit, and then we go to command V. You can see I've now got an extracted copy of all the source code out of BBM. And there is the straight BBC Micro source code. So we can, uh, we're done with this now. So we will close BBM and we'll save this as source. Now that's fine for BBC Micros, but if we want to try and get this to work on the Commodore 64, we're going to have to make a few changes because BBC Basic in this raw form is not compatible with the C64. A good example is the first few lines here. Stuff I put in, that's the splash screen I, I wrote, and that's not compatible, so that can go immediately. We're also, you notice this indentation here, we're going to actually have to take that out line by line. So let me just do a few lines and save. Uh, now I need to all of those, but just for a demonstration, now if I open up Vice Emulator, which is for the Commodore 64, I will select X64, just like BBM it loads a Commodore space. So if I take these few lines as is, and then copy. Now annoyingly you can't just uh, control or command V and paste in this version of Vice. I think you can on Windows, but not on the Mac. So to paste in you have to hold down, in this case the function key F10, down to edit and then select paste from clipboard. Now you'll notice something really weird has happened and it's just pasted a load of symbols in. That's because the Commodore system is case sensitive. So for example, if I write normally, each letter is uppercase. If I try to do a shift uppercase, it actually starts printing patterns instead of letters. And that's what it's reading this as. So what we're going to have to do is remove all the uppercase characters from the source code. The quick way to do that is to select all and from edit, transformations and make lower case. If we now just try and paste those lines back, let's see what happens. So again, go into the sub menu, edit, paste, and you can see the lines now actually copy through correctly. So I will now go through and make the necessary changes as seen in the book. It's not too difficult. It's just mainly a few syntax changes and also rewriting the how, how files are saved. Um, which is down the bottom here of the source code. So I'll just get on and do that. Okay, so all the modified source code is now in. I'm just listing it to make sure everything's okay. If I just relist again from the top. I can show you these lines here. I've actually re-added a new front splash screen for this version, especially for the Commodore 64. Uh, modifying the original BBC micro code I stripped out. So the line one here where it says print CHR character, then there's two poke commands. Basically with Commodore Basic, you can't uh, control the color and graphics directly from basics. You have to poke memory. Uh, this is creates uh, just the color palette, basically the border and the background color palette. So if I actually run, I'll show you what I mean. There we go. And then you press in this case, instead of space, the F1 key. And there we go. And then we're actually into the same menu that you saw on the BBC Micro and the game pretty much works the same way. So now what I need to do is create a new virtual disk image to save this onto. So we'll go drive and we'll say create new disk image. 
disk image type d64 you said create and then you enter file name um, path etc and we'll take from there so I've actually already done this so there's the silver dot d64 which is the um, disk image equivalent of an SSD file for a BBC micro and if you're wondering where those files actually are kept if you find your vice application in in applications so vice and then our vice app here if you actually right click that and ask it to show package contents contents resources and there is the dot d64 disk image so we will leave that there but we'll take a copy onto the desktop so we've now got working code so what's left to do is to put in my usb data stick for the c64 and then it's simply a case of drag drop and copy that file across with that done let's now head over to the c64 and see if we can get this to work okay so we've just booted up the c64 so we'll now go and access the um, media access so here is the uh, usb stick drive and there is the disk image silver which we'll select and back to the uh, main terminal screen so now let's load in our program load silver mtn silver mountain not forgetting to go comma eight at the end and now we should be able to run this so it says press f1 so the f1 on the function key and we can start a new game and now we can say where we want to go so we'll go west i've also put the uh, input prompt in yellow watercolor is black and then I've chosen a, a neutral grey for the main background. Let's go west again. You'll notice this plays a little bit slower on the Commodore than it does on the BBC Micro but then again the Commodore was a slower machine. And it's only clocked about 1 megahertz as opposed to the BBC Micro's 2 megahertz and you really do notice that. Still I'm really really pleased we've actually managed to achieve that. If you want to have a go at typing this in yourself, you can find the official PDF scans of these books for free from the Usborne Publishing website. The links are in the description. Alternatively, if you'd like to have a play with the custom versions I have created for the BBC Micro, C64 and RiscOS on the Raspberry Pi, then you can find the downloads at patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi sheep under our general support and downloads tier for just $3 a month where you'll also have access to a number of other project materials featured here on the channel. Visit www.patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep. Your support is always greatly appreciated and received. Well, that's just about it for this video. Do remember to go and visit our new partners at pcbgogo.com and I'll see you real soon. Until next time, thank you for your company and bye for now. Thank you.